Hello everybody, my name is Mark and I'd like to show you how this truck I have for sale. And uh, I'll have two purposes for the video. I want to show you the conversion I've done to it and um, hopefully I'll find a buyer quickly and then we'll leave the video up if anybody wants to see this conversion. So this is a F-250 year 2000 and it has the 7.3 diesel engine that everybody likes. I'm not a diesel specialist, but everybody tells me it's a great engine. So uh, it has that engine. 2003 is when they made the switch to the 6.0 engine. So uh, this is a good workhorse, and it's a truck that you can work in, work with, and live in uh, because I've converted the inside to be like a camper. Uh, so I want to show you all that. So come along with me for the tour. All right, first we'll show you the engine. This is the 7.3 diesel engine that everybody loves. And as uh, far as I know, it's in great condition. Oil's been changed recently, and um, it's working great. So uh, shouldn't have problems with the engine. Okay, so first we'll show you the inside. I haven't done that much to the front seat um, here and the driver's area except to install this nice radio. This is a Sony 5600. It's got a good Bluetooth connection and a nice sound, and I'm gonna play it for you here. So, um, I'm playing it on YouTube. Life is like a mountain railroad from Buddy Green. And, uh, all right. So you can stop, you can control it there. You can go back and see if it'll go. We went back to a different song just by using the back and forward. So it's actually on you playing YouTube songs in my playlist with um, the controls here. And of course, there's much more to do uh, in that radio. That's just a little sample. All right, so I'm gonna turn it off here. And um, so um, I have here the um, brake controller. This is an add-on brake controller. Um, and uh, so you can set, you can adjust here your set power, it's like that, and just enter like that. It's, the trailer's not connected, so it's got the red screen there. Okay, and uh, I have, I am a ham radio operator, and I like, think it's useful to have CB when I'm on the road. Uh, so I had this CB radio installed, and this is a two meter ham radio. I think it's got another band also. It's covered up because it's right under my drink holder, <laughs> and I didn't want to drip any water on it, so that has to be uh, resolved if uh, I'm gonna have to modify that installation. So, um, and I've got antennas uh, installed in the roof. All right, so I think that covers it for the front seat. Everything's pretty much stock. I want to say one more thing about the engine. Uh, the 7.3 engine without modification is pretty sluggish. This truck was quite sluggish. And um, I, found, I found it was not that fun to drive. So what I did was I, I found a tuning program. Uh, I think it's, uh, what's it called? I, we'll check that later. I put in the extreme tune on it and now it's got plenty of power. Uh, so it's you can accept, really accelerate when you get on the highway, no problem. So uh, that's what I did with the engine. Okay, and as I mentioned before, I'm a ham radio operator. This one has a mount for the CB antenna, it sits about there, and this is for the two meter uh, ham radio. And, and um, so those two can be mounted, or we have plastic caps that are on right now as rain covers. So uh, permanently mounted antennas for those that want to operate on the CV bands and ham radio bands. Okay, now I'd like to show you the back seat. Uh, this is a four door, uh, as you can see. And so this is much, has a lot more space in it than the smaller cabs. And I wanna show you first with it all empty. Um, and then we'll start adding things to it. So this is the basis of the bed. Uh, you can let it sit there. I, I've got a cooler I put under here, I'll show you that. But this is a, a look, I think a two by six and uh, hinges and this is a piece of plywood covered with fabric and this is the the stronger part of the bed and the base of the main part of the bed so now we're going to start adding pieces as you can see we still have the seat belts here uh, and we have power coming in here so i drilled a hole in the bottom a two inch hole and you can connect an extension cord from a generator or from a house if you're if you're parked next to a house you can just run an extension cord right to the bottom of the truck and then you've got uh, AC power right inside here. Uh, well, let's point out our fire extinguishers. I've got um, a small one over here. 
as the first one that I bought, and then I found that it wasn't the DOT approved one, so now we have a DOT approved fire extinguisher over there. And um, so we got two of them here. And uh, let's start adding pieces now, and let's show you the conversion. Okay, so we have put the cooler here, and you can see it's not, uh, not too heavy. Um, and uh, this is a plug-in cooler, and you can set the temperature to whatever you want it to be. You can actually make it a freezer, and I went on my trip with uh, frozen hamburger meat and cooked some hamburgers on the road. So you just dial the temperature to whatever you want. If you want to keep drinks cold or if you actually want to keep things frozen, it works great. Uh, it's not necessarily included in the price. We'll negotiate. If you want to buy the truck, we'll figure that out. But I um, also want to mention that I have the back seat still. The back seat has been removed to allow all this, but it's available and uh, can definitely come with the truck. We'll definitely come with the truck. So, um, so now this piece here, this is, and you can see we're getting closer to the actual bed. Uh, the cooler keeps this up, but you can see it's still a little bit crooked there. So you just have to put something underneath it and we'll just use this little board for now. Um, and now you're gonna see that it's coming down pretty flat. Okay, and with that, we need to add also, this is the other piece of the bed right here. And my idea was that um, I also want to be able to sit over there. So let me show you that next. We'll show you that and then we will add the, um, then we'll put the bed together. Okay, okay so uh, the, the foundation of this part is this piece of wood. Um, this piece of wood, as you can see, is, is um, like a wedge. And because the floor is not uh, exactly level, we have got it set so that this uh, sits in the back where it starts to dip down, and then this rests in the front where it's higher. And we've got a little um, in a little hole here for the to cover where the electric socket comes in, so we don't put stress on the electric socket. So this hole right here goes on a bolt that is uh, that was part of holding the seat down, and that holds it in place. And that's the bottom. Okay. So now the top part is a. Um, at first, my my plan was just to be able to sit here. Um, and so I had, I have a milk crate that I put over here like that. And all this piece was solid here. Uh, so, but then I want to do the bed also. So we'll get to that part, but let me show you the first part. So I'm gonna put this right on the bolt here. All right, it's there. And then we'll add the, uh, the milk crate. Okay, a milk crate over the top. Let's see, there it is. Okay, we got our cushion. Okay, and here's actually, it doesn't look very comfortable, but it's really not bad. So the idea is that we would um, put the seat forward, and now you put this down like so. And now you got your little office, laptop, computer, space there. And I didn't get a chance to try it out very much, but I think it would work. And depending on your height, it's, uh, it, it can work, okay? That was the first uh, thing I had in mind. But then um, I realized that these egg crates, milk crates, can actually be good for, important for storage. So the first design was with the crate sitting like so. And I have a little cardboard box in the bottom so things don't fall through. So the first design was just for me to sit on, but then I wanted to uh, actually put something inside and make it the right height for the bed. So then I made another cutout in the wood. So now we can sit one here. Now we'll put two of them together. Okay, I brought in another uh, milk crate and this one has my Ryobi tools in it. Uh, you might need them when you're on the road. So I'm going to set this one on the bottom because we may not need to access that one as much. So we'll set that one right in this place in the wood. And now you can see, can you see it's behind, see that? The, the, when you put it upside down, then it's going on the outside of this wood and this wood is keeping it in place. But then when you want it this way, the height needed to be lower uh, to, for my bed. So for the two crates to match the right height. So there it is. That's going to hold in place. I'm going to put this one here. As you probably know, those fit together. Then we'll grab this piece right here. And can you see the back here? Um, 
So over here on this side, we have uh, the bracket. You can see the bracket over on that side. Oh, oh back up a little bit. No, 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 back toward the outside of the door. Back out the door. See the bracket below the bed, below the two by six? Yeah. Okay, so there's the bracket. That's fixed in place, and then we have the hinge. So on this side, uh, there's not room. I don't know if there's room, like sitting. I didn't want to have the same thing here. I want to leave the space available. So we have this piece we can just remove. And um, so it has a, um, see it's notched here for getting in and out. See this, uh, and this is just going to, we'll just bring these uh, wing nuts up. Okay, there's one. Okay. Oop, there's the other one. Okay, this one just has uh, two holes and a uh, slot. There's a bolt sticking out over here. So we just uh, get it in there. And there it is. And, um, and now you have your bed. So it takes a little bit of work to convert from chair to bed, but you may not mind that. And, um, and you may want to adjust it up a little bit with something under there to make it perfect, but you may not notice. Let's add the cushions now. Okay, so these are sofa cushions. And we're going to cover them with a sheet so it looks a little bit better, but there's one. There's the other. covered up okay so now we have the cushions on and covered up so it doesn't look so bad I want to mention at this point that you may notice that this is this bed level is very high compared to where the back seat was sitting and there's two purposes in that one purpose is it allows more storage underneath for example the cooler is a pretty pretty big cooler and it, the height is just right for that and and I have two milk crates over here under the bed so there's some storage there and you could actually fit up to six more of those milk crates in here if you wanted to be that crowded uh, for more storage. I wouldn't recommend having it that crowded. But, um, and also the other point is that, maybe you'll notice here, I wanted to be able to use this uh, extra two inches on each side above the, where the window is. Okay, so you can see this, this space here. If I was lower, my feet would be hitting up here against this part. But now I've got an extra two inches on each side. I'm five foot 11 and it works out okay for me. I have to go a little bit diagonal, but um, I slept in here a few nights and I was actually able to rest pretty well. So um, that's, that's the reason for the height. Okay, this is the Zero Breeze air conditioner. I think it's the Mark II, uh, second generation. And um, it's not super strong and powerful but they did a pretty good job with it. I'm sure they'll keep improving technology little by little. Um, we have a little drain hose here uh, that we put on. And I'm gonna show you how I, where I put it and how I connect it. All right, let me carry it around inside. I'll meet you on the other side. Okay, so I've got the air conditioner right here. And uh, you can see I've got a bucket here for the uh, drain hose. Uh, now, one thing I did along the way was put something under here to mount it up a little bit higher. I'll do that right now. Okay, so I've got these boards. Uh, this is a little thin board. And then um, this gives a little more height. And of course you can work out whether it's needed or not, but that's what I was doing at some point. That gives you uh, a little bit more drainage uh, down, a little more space for the drain hose. And also the feet, the feet kind of uh, might fall off the edge of the block. So there it is. All right, so that's plenty high enough. Now we, need to, we have to attach the, uh, the intake and out, and out uh, what do you call it? We have to attach the two hoses. All right, so now we have the uh, exhaust and intake hose there. I'm gonna roll down this window and we're gonna install this piece that uh, I fabricated with the help of some friends. Um, so this is gonna sit um, so this is going to go to the air conditioner on that side, and we're going to put this in. So basically, I'm going to show this part here. Uh, this is 
this is uh, expanded PVC. So it's like plastic, but, but um, flat, okay? And we cut it to just the right size. We'll slide it at the bottom of the window to one side and then push it on the other side and then just slide it up. Okay. And this is HVAC uh, corners here. And then we'll just raise this window. Okay, like so. Now, if you don't have the, um, if you don't have the AC coming in, by drilling a hole in the bottom and bringing in that uh, connector. Uh, you can also just bring the cord in from the generator through this uh, right here, this little, see the little, uh, this little gap here. You could roll the window down a tiny bit and you could bring a cord in through there. There you go, okay? So this has a piece on each side and the window is just fitting up in there. And if you don't seal up around these hoses, I found out by experience, you, you'll have some rainwater splashing on you when it rains and uh, that'll wake you up. At least it woke me up. Okay, so I have the uh, hose connected here and now I remember why I wanted to have it up higher because if my feet are there, um, I want these hoses a little higher. So what I did is I, I, racked, uh, I fixed up some bungee cords underneath this to hold it up. My feet could fit underneath there and um, so We'll plug in this electric cord and I don't recommend screwing it down. It's tight enough. Let me just plug it in right here because it, if you screw it down, then you have to drag it around with you everywhere unless you want to keep on screwing, screwing, unscrewing. Okay, so basically then you'll connect it to your electric and the AC is now set up. So. Okay, so here you can see the AC all set up. And like I said, it works pretty well. Uh, if you're parked by somebody's house, what you can do is just set it up to run for uh, maybe a half an hour, probably maybe an hour. And um, what you also wanna do is hook up a power strip and get a bug zapper, because when you close up the truck, you wanna have it uh, zapping bugs for you during that time period also. Otherwise, you may have some bugs that spend the night with you. So, um, Get it cool, and if you don't have the, the hour to let it cool down, then probably what you can do is just run the engine, run the uh, truck engine and the air conditioner, cool it down using the, the, which has more cooling power than this. And once it's cooled down that way, then probably you'll be okay, depending on all the temperatures outside and so on. But uh, you can see it's pretty well sealed here. And um, this, this piece that I fabricated also fit an F350 2016. So at least uh, Ford seems to be fairly um, consistent in the size of that window. If it's the same window size from a 2000 F250 to a 2016 350, then it looks like they're keeping that window size the same. Okay, we wanna show you the back the bed also. And as you can see, we've got a good solid uh, plastic bed liner here. And um, as you can see, it is uh, ready for a gooseneck trailer. Uh, so this is for the chains. And then, but this part can be removed. Uh, you would just pull out a uh, <laughs> pull out a lever on the side, <laughs> and um, then flip this over, and then this this sits flat. Okay, so this piece removes from about right there, and just fits down inside. So that won't bother you. So the flat flat bed here. We've got a nice toolbox, plenty of space inside. But the tools don't come with it, um, and um, you got some little things for bungee cords here. And um, what else? Anything else we should mention here? Oh yeah, we have our um, uh, hookup ready for the um, gooseneck trailer, all the connections uh, there. And if you want to do fifth wheel, it is possible to get an adapter that fits here for fifth wheel. So this may not be the best truck for pulling a huge camper, but um, uh, it's only an F-250, but it can pull quite a bit. And there we have a special creation by an artist, Sean Kelly. And I think people will know what it, what it is. That's someone that promised to come back soon and showing how he comes. So I think that's all we wanted to show you about the truck for now. If you have any questions, uh, comments, please uh, comment, let us know. And uh, maybe somebody wants to buy this truck and maybe they'll give you some ideas how to convert your truck.
Okay, I wanted to mention that I added these towing mirrors and they work really well. Uh, so, uh, nice new towing mirrors. The ones that were on there were really small, so I changed them out. And the truck has brand new Michelin tires, four new, brand new tires. So, as you can see, the tread is good and uh, so you get plenty of life out of those. So, I think the truck's in pretty good condition, ready to go. Somebody should like it.